Any other uh, changes to the budget? Yes, Councillor. Page two of the budget's priority initiative um, use contract workers uh, placement of emphasis on contract services. Uh, you know, I understand the rationale behind this, you know, uh, state federal funding being cut and we need to uh, 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 find ways to save money and such like that. The problem I have with priority is that it flies in the face of one of the major findings of the community needs report that was done uh, just recently by the New Hampshire Charitable Foundation and the uh, uh, Monadnock United Way, which uh, it, it said that we in this area have a severe problem with low wages as it uh, pertains to a livable wage. And it asks uh, organizations and governments in the region to do what they can in their own venues to, to address these problems. And by uh, taking on a priority of contract services, um, you're not only not addressing the problem, but you're making it worse. Th this strategy, it's, 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 it's become a new corporate strategy to cut wages, to cut hours, to cut benefits. And uh, when you do all of those things, it triggers uh, uh, th they're able to actually get away with uh, uh, subverting um, state and federal labor laws. And I just don't think that this is something that, as a city, who is supposed to be addressing the, the, the problems that are identified by organizations that we fund and, and that we work on, and, and members of, of city staff actually work on this commission, uh, we, we, need, we need to solve these problems. We need to address these problems. We don't, we don't need to make them worse. Um, you know, as I said before, I understand the unwillingness of our state government to really address the unfair tax structure. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we need to fall in line and, and take out, uh, 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 take it out on, 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 the, on the poorest and, and, the, and, and the, the most vulnerable people in our society. I, I just think it's something that we don't need to do. Uh, a, a counselor just posted something that um, Robert Kennedy said, and he, he said that too often we excuse those who are willing to build their own lives on the shattered dreams of others. And that's exactly what this policy does. Now, I can understand that, you know, we need to use this every now and again, but not as a priority. Not as a priority to, 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 to cut wages, to cut benefits on, on the most vulnerable people. I understand that, you know, uh, uh, you know we're going to do this through attrition. But all that means is we're not going to see the faces. But the faces are there. Those people will still exist in this city. They will still be there, and they're just one more person who's not going to have a full-time job. They're going to have to work for one of the two other uh, maintenance companies in town who are going to offer them less than a livable wage, no benefits. They're going to have to take unpaid time off for uh, Christmas and things like that. And that's not the sort of thing that I think that the city government ought to be uh, doing, so I would uh, move to amend to move this out of our uh, priority fiscal initiatives. Uh, well, uh, this is kind of unusual. Uh, there's a motion. Is there a second? Uh, yeah, I guess I would second it just to, um, <coughs> it's just kind to of understand how uh, can we have, uh, uh, are we adopting the narrative of this budget document, or we, you know, it's 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 a good discussion. It, it's it's a, it certainly centers around what I've been saying about the cost of of doing business. It's it's out of control, and we've got to 
we got to do something different. And we got to stop just talking about doing it different. We got to figure out how to do it different. Because if we don't do it different on this level, the state's never going to do it, and the federal government doesn't know how to do anything different than spend spend money. So I don't know if it's, if this is the beginning of a discussion we need to take. Then let's spend a few minutes t talking about it. But uh, you know, I've seen good come from contracting certain portions of of services, whether you're in the private sector or the public sector. But I, I don't know. I mean, livable wage. What is livable wage? The guy making twenty bucks an hour ain't doing too good these days. So. Okay, I want to pull the discussion back a bit. I, I think that your conversation is very, very valid. I think that perhaps we should have a, a separate workshop to deal with it. If not there, perhaps in the budget policy, that would be the time. Uh, in my time in city government, uh, as, a, as a counselor, we look at line items, how we're spending money. At this point, what you're talking about is more very early pre-planning philosophy. So, and, uh, I, I, I don't know. Aren't we trying to reinvent? I mean, <laughs> continue I ask, to do things the same way, or we, well, that, we're not getting it, and we're not going forward? Can I ask a basic question? Yeah, sure. Sure. Before you go, okay. can I just ask when you're the chair? Uh, As a vice chair, I went. Okay, <laughs> you pull rank on me. <laughs> did, yeah. did Tom second it? Did you accept yes. Tom second? Yes. Okay. Yes. As budget document does not the, the the direction the priorities drive the numbers I mean what we say isn't that part of the document isn't that part of our budget how we spend money how we're going to do things how we're going to apply rules now who does that is that is that not the City Council that sets policy, <laughs> and and uh, and it's in the budget document. So I just thought that if it's in the budget document, I I would like to remove it from the budget document. I'll grant you that. Yep, city manager. I'm sorry, you know, I, I I just have to say I think this is taken totally out of context. Yeah, apparently uh, uh, that's the way it is this evening, but. This this is a statement that the manager prepares. This is my budget message to the city council. <clears throat> it is it doesn't represent a philosophy. It's talking about tools that we've used, and it's and we've been reflecting this for a while. Our intent is not to hurt people, and we certainly understand and recognize uh, that people's lives, uh, you know, are affected by our policies. Ultimately, the policy comes from city council and ought to be driven during the, the fiscal policy discussion. This is about the manager saying that here are some of the tools that we use, but it's not a reflection of corporate America. This is a reflection of the city of Keene and what we do. So rather than have additional people to do the line striping, because the cost of doing so right now is so expensive, it's just in two benefits. The, the retirement account and a health account. So we so we look at where we want to place the resources in this organization, and we try to make intelligent uh, decisions relative to where those resources uh, are are located, where we can outsource. We're not putting departments out of business. We're not talking about that. As a matter of fact, through contract and part time and seasonal, we've brought more people into the fold, and the city pays extremely well. So this. What this is is a recognition that adjustments have had to be made. We've made a commitment to our workforce. We haven't laid one person off. And we've, in, and we've actually, through part-time and other positions, helped other people. And I would argue persuasively, I hope, that we've actually improved a lot of, a lot of people's lives in the city of Keene. This is the manager's budget message trying to reflect how we achieve these results. I don't know that the charter would find me in an error here. The city manager should present that. I'm hearing an undertone that maybe someone feels that the manager is perhaps driving the philosophic discussion of the city council. To the extent that my budget message represents what I think I hear from the council, I hope that I'm on the right page. But if I'm not, then it would be during the fiscal policies that we would have such a debate. I agree. Councilor you, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Councilor Clark, I agree with you totally in the respect that 
contracting can have some devastating effects upon people. I don't think we should take it out of the possibility of use within the budget plan, as you stated yourself. So I think that maybe the motion is a little premature in that you want to take it out, but that I think the proper way would be to get it agendized uh, at uh, the appropriate committee meeting so that the uh, information that you've given would be brought to the city manager, brought to the department heads in a manner so that it could be studied and then we could look at it in a whole concept for who we're going to affect and how it would affect the employees of the city and the contractors that we would be doing business with. Yep, Councillor Robert. <clears throat> the, um, I take somewhat of an offense because I think the city of Keene does a great job for its workers. It does a great, creates a great environment for the people <clears throat> that live in Keene. And I was just doing some research the, the other night. Manchester, New Hampshire has, of all the cities in the United States, is the fifth highest tax city in the United States in metropolitan. And we have a higher tax rate than the city of Manchester. The Department and the Employment Services in New Hampshire said over the next 10 years, there's going to be about 68,000 new jobs. Half of them are going to be in box stores, nursing assistants, ones that are not even, quote, unquote, pay livable wages. So we may not like that. And we may want to, like Robert Kennedy, be able to lift up everybody so they can have a quality <clears throat> of life. But we in the city, we as a city council, we as a city manager, every, we have to ensure that we can get the best that we can with the limited resources we have. We demand a lot from the people at 3140 <clears throat> per thousand <clears throat> excuse me, is a lot of money. And we're trying to squeeze as much as possible out. The city manager's right. We have not laid off a single person. We've been squeezing our employees, and our employees have been stepping up to the plate and working harder. And, and so to go and say, hey, we, we purposely want to get rid of all our um, full-time employees so we can contract them out for little to no benefits, we don't want that because we know the quality of our life depends on the quality of the employees that we have. And if the employees know they're going to be squeezed and thrown overboard, we're not going to get any good employees. And so, yes, I think what the, the message out of the uh, is taken totally out of context plain and simple, the city manager is trying to do what's best for the city with the limited resources that we have, and these resources are going to get less and less. And so the other choice is we as a city council then have to go to the city um, manager and say, these are the services that we no longer can provide to the people. And that's a decision that we as a city council have to make to give the city and guidance. It's not his responsibility to come and say, cut out these services. Because when I first moved back to Keene, I think someone tried to cut out leaf collection one year, and I think that filled the newspaper. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> I won't do that again. Good, we're laughing a little bit. <laughs> okay, I am really, really... Uh, restraining from jumping into this discussion because, as, as was said, I think that it is appropriate as a separate agenda item or a workshop. It should be part of the budget planning uh, process early on when we're setting the budget priorities as we give the manager direction. So I, I really don't – I'm not going to get involved because this gets into some national political philosophies that I've been very happily uh, not <laughs> avoiding. Not, not gotten drawn into within the, the, the local government. We do have a motion on the floor in a second. So uh, could the motion be repeated, please, Mr. Chair? Does Krishna have it? It was essentially a... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there was a motion to delete uh, contracted employees. Okay. Was there a second? Did you want to start? I'm waiting for her to see if she has it there. I, I did say. I, I believe the motion was, if I understood it correctly, to uh, delete the reference on page number two of the busage, budget message with reference to contracted employees. So I would remove it from that sentence. That would appear to be the case, Councillor, unless that was not your as intent. a as a initiative priority. Right. It's it's not an initiative priority. It's not an initiative priority. Uh, uh, 
priority fiscal initiatives? Fiscal initiatives, but what do you Placement of emphasis on contract services. It's a new paragraph. Mr. Chair. Oh, here it is. Okay. Prior, prior fiscal initiatives. All right. So it's lower down. I certainly want to apologize if, if, if I have offended it. I, I certainly didn't want to say that someone is not doing their job correctly or if someone is trying to uh, usurp the authority of the city council. I am not saying that whatsoever. Mr. City Manager, I want you to know that. That is not what I am saying. What I'm saying is that I understand through all of the pressures that we have, you are taking what you believe are the correct steps to solve our fiscal problems. All I am saying is that I don't believe that this particular initiative should be a priority. We have, on a separate page, created a new position of contract manager to actually administer this policy. I don't think so. Uh, well, yes, we have, right uh, here. Uh, $56,000 and three hundred. Contracted services. Uh, contract right, manager. Uh, he's, he's correct. We do have a contract manager. But it, it isn't to put people out of business. But that's... No, no. The, uh, through earlier discussions in earlier, earlier committee meetings, we have talked about possibilities of things that, have, that could happen. For example, janitors. Janitorial services, once they have retired, could be contracted out. Now, if you know any janitors in the city of Keene, and there are several of them, only a few of them have full-time jobs now. Most of the other ones have had to take a job with the other two contract service companies out there. And they've had to take cuts in pay, cuts in benefits, cuts in hours, and have to actually take unpaid time off to spend Christmas with their kids. Now, and I've heard that, you know, we're not going to do this. We're not going to lay anybody off. We're going to wait for them to retire. And But then there's still this younger fella, unskilled worker, doesn't have anywhere else to go, who's going to fill in the shoes just like he would in, in any other position in the city of Keene. He's still out there. We don't know his face. We don't see his face, but he's still out there. And that's what I'm talking about. I'm not saying that we... It's, it, 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 you know, contracting out services is not a good thing. We've done it in the past, and it's something that we should look, look to do. I'm saying it should not be one of our priorities, simply because we have in front of us a study that tells us that doing that is a, is, is, is a big problem that we're already having in this area. And, and we, sh we shouldn't make it worse. That's all I'm saying. Mr. Chairman. I, I, I don't want to get into a no, debate. I, I'd like I, to comment. Please, if I could. Okay, one I, response. I'm not going to take a vote. I, I understand my place, and it's not to debate that. I appreciate that. I thank the councilor for those comments. I just want to be very careful about talking about specific uh, services inside the city. There is no plan to put any janitor out of work. I, want, I just want us to be very careful about what we say and how, what kind of uh, examples we're using. That could create a great deal of morale issue for our organization. I think the only thing that was referenced was during the ESCO contracts and things of that nature and the contract management position. We did talk about looking at every opportunity relative to how we do business, but there is no plan in place right now to put anybody out, you know, out of business, whether it be a janitorial position or other. Those are just <coughs> examples of some of the things that companies look at or organizations look at. I, I'm sure the council meant it in that fashion. Okay. Thank you. I think Last comment. The second request, please. For the motion to be read, please. In my understanding at this point, thank you to uh, Councilor Jacobs for pointing us to the right spot on the yeah. page, uh, would be to delete the reference to uh, the placement of emphasis on contracted services under prior fiscal initiatives on page two of the budget message. That is my understanding of the motion. 
Maker of the motion, you agree? I would agree. And the second was you. You agree? I, I would agree, but having having heard that, I I may have changed my mind a bit. Where it's a prior fiscal, I think that discussion we just had was very important for this this group to have, and I'm glad we had it. So that not, I didn't know how good it was going to be. <laughs> my second, <laughs> we need to have more discussions like that. I'm glad you're happy. Good. Okay, motion's made, seconded. I think we all understand what we're voting on. Uh, those in favor? Would be one. And those opposed? Would be four. But I think I could promise the folks at home that you'll be hearing more of this conversation in a different forum.